Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So this is my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is the Velvet Cables Crochet Pocket Shawl. This picture does not do this justice in the way that the stitch work is working out. It's a beautiful pocket shawl but the stitch work is absolutely amazing and today I'm going to be using a four ply worsted yarn so that you can see the stitches clearly. But this here is using Bernat Velvet in the color of Mushroom. Four balls is what it takes to do this and let me explain what we're going to be doing today because this is actually a sequential in steps in order to do it and I do have some advice because I have been practicing too. When we go to look at the shawl there is cable working that you see here and this is at the pocket itself. So this is my practice. We have the cables, we have the trinity stitch, you have the edges. Now on the pockets you have these uh, front post um, double crochets that are here and those are popping up to make the ridging effect. These are not, this particular part is not on the shawl itself. It's only on the pockets just to give it more interest. So it's a really neat idea. So the cables are only on the ends of the actual shawl itself. So when you look at the shawl you'll see the cable. It's by the neckline here and then there's another set of cables on the back side here as it comes around the model. Now when you're doing a sample like this what happens is if you could do the whole thing like say you do like 80 inches of this and you do it like this the cables will appear upside down on the opposite side of the body. So what's happening here is that you're looking at two panels and they're being joined with the whip stitch at the back of the neck where it's just being joined and it will be nice and hidden if you do an invisible join. So what you're looking at is two panels that are coming down and the pockets are adjustable. So if you want your pockets to be at a different height you can just uh, try it on, see where it's gonna land and then mark it where you would like your pockets and those, those are sewn on afterwards. So there is diagrams that are available to you. They're on page number two. There's two sets. This here is for the pocket, the bottom one and this is for the main shawl itself. And so on page number two you're gonna find the diagrams and you'll see that there's two this one here is the pocket so you'll notice that you have the ribbing stitches that you'll see in the pocket. They don't exist here on the shawl. So if you look at that it's missing. So when you're looking at this particular one here on the shawl itself there's three stitches before the cabling starts and then this is kind of like in sets of two plus one then going all the way across and you just have to kind of worry about just making sure that the last nine stitches are just free and available for you for when you do the cabling. So it's a really nice easy way to get yourself back on track just in case you have to. For the pocket here we're going to have like the first stitch and then there's gonna be some ribbing that will happen and then two just regular half double crochets and then your cabling and then this will line up all the way and there's 11 stitches between here and the end on both sides. So that's something that you can consider as well. When I was doing the trinity stitch in the large shawl sample I noticed that there was 27 trinity stitches that will make that up going all the way across and I wanted to record that for my own pleasure. So today I'm going to, to take you through and my personal advice to you is this. So my advice to you is do the pockets first. You'll get used to doing the cabling and you'll notice that the cabling kind of comes out and it's opposite to each other. Now the one that's on the one side is harder to do because of the access point but it's still doable. So if you really want the easy way out and if and it's gonna cause you to quit you can do both cables like the very first one that is much easier than this one. And so they will both look exactly identical. So you will not have the look where they come out like this but they will both look like this set of cabling on this side. So that's something that you can decide for yourself if you feel you're gonna quit because this side is too hard just do it like this and if somebody's gonna judge you on that then too bad. <laughs> so let's uh, begin and we're going to start our story on the pockets to begin. So let's begin to do the pockets. The whole project requires the Bernat Velvet and a five and a half millimeter size I crochet hook today. I'm just using a six millimeter size uh, J crochet hook today and I'm just using some fun spare yarn. So let's uh, begin. You're going to chain 33. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and go all the way to 33. Maybe back here in just a moment. Let's do row number one of the pocket. Let's go second, uh, third chain from the hook sorry. So go, go back one, two, go to the third. Get the back hump of the chain itself in half double crochet. The chains that we just skipped over will not be counting as a stitch in the future. So don't worry about that. So on the back hump of the chain going all the way across, across please half double crochet and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the end of row number one and I got a half double crochet in, in each all the way. So we're going to turn and go on to row number two. Row number two is gonna be the setup basically for this and rows number two through five is the repeat pattern for the whole pocket area. So let's begin number two. So now we're going to chain two which will not count as a stitch and then you're going to half double crochet in the very first one. Now the next one here is going to be a front post uh, double crochet that we're about to do. So to do that around the next post 
you're just gonna wrap the hook and going into the side of the post and pick it up and pull through and pull through two and two. That's a front post double crochet and you'll do those in the next one so you have at least two there. So this is now going to uh, strategize ourselves. We're now looking at the right side of the project because this is popping out the good side. The next two stitches in a row, they're each going to be a half double crochet. So starting in the very next one. So those ones that I were just in, I, I have to count those. So one and two. So the next stitch is actually right here. Okay, so just lean it forward if you're not sure. And, it, and it's the one that's the third away. And you're gonna half double crochet that one plus the next one in a row. Okay, it feels like it's wrong but you have to trust in the system. So now we're going to do the cable work. So the first cable that we're about to do is easier than the second cable. So if the second one's kind of boggling your mind a little bit, you can do both of the cables the same way. It's up to you. So you're gonna wrap the hook uh, twice. It's a treble and you're gonna skip the next three and go to the fourth and then go and look down at the post of the fourth one and you're gonna go into the side of the post so it's a front post treble and you'll, you're just gonna treble all the way back and you'll do that one plus the next two in a row. So just going into the next one available and then finally one more time. Now we have to go back and get the ones that we jumped over. Okay, so we have to get those three. So one, two and three. So these ones here are going to cross in front of these which are so much easier to access than the other side and that's why I'm saying there's a difference. So wrap in the hook twice, come to the first one that you skipped and just do that one. See we're locating these for the very first time so in the future you'll already know where those are. So you're just going to wrap it and go into the next one available and then wrap and get the third one. Just peel things back if you don't see it. So these cables or these trebles should appear in front of the other ones. On the other side these cables will be behind the project which is harder to access but it's still doable. We're now going to begin and start the trinity stitch. So starting in the next stitch here is the first one and it's a half double crochet. So that's gonna stand alone by itself. Now the trinity is gonna now move us forward until we get to the last nine stitches. So to do the trinity you're gonna wrap the hook and go into the same stitch you were just in and pull through and hold. You're gonna do the next two exact same way. So just wrap and into the next stitch, pull through and hold. The next one, wrap and into the next one, pull through and hold. And now you're gonna pull through everything. In the future you're going to be playing in gap spaces so we're just locating them for the first time and now you're gonna chain one and then do the next trinity. So the trinity is based on using the same one as the last one. So this stitch, so going in, pull through, the next one that's empty, pull through and the next one after that. It's almost like a star stitch. Okay and then pull through all of it and then chain one to move on. So the next one, the next one starts in the same one of the last one's finishing. So going in, the next one and the next one. And then pull through all of it and then chain one to finish. So they're not always gonna be chain one to finish. It's gonna be the very last trinity that you don't do that on. So what you are looking for is the last nine stitches which could be coming up really shortly. And I'm gonna count just to make sure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. So this is actually technically the last time you do the trinity. So you're not going to chain one but you're going to put in a half double crochet in the same one as the last one to finalize that section. So this is what it will look like in the middle. So to continue along you're now going to do another cable. So you're gonna wrap the hook twice, skip in the first three and then go into the fourth as a front post treble and you're gonna do the next two like that too. And finally it's the third one. 
Now you have to come back and get the ones that you jumped over. The problem is, is that you have to access it from behind so it's a little awkward here for me and even on camera. So you should, and I think I got it this time. It's harder the first time we're going through this because you're establishing these stitches for the first time. So I'm just checking and I do have that one so the other two are empty. So I'm going to focus on the other two now. So from the behind, I'm gonna come in and get the other one. And then I'm gonna get my last one. And so those were accessed from behind. So now that those three are done, you're gonna continue along. And so we have to, at this point, get in uh, two half double crochets and two front post double crochets and one half double crochet at the very end. So starting in the very first stitch, you're gonna put in two half double crochets. So one and two and then two front post double crochets And then finally the last stitch here will be a half double crochet to finish. And that goes all the way across. So now we've just established the cables and the trinity stitch and it will, should get much easier from here. Let's move on to row number three. So rows number two is the only time you have to do the crisscrossing. The rest of it is actually really quite easy to do. So it's just every time you have to do this and you don't have to do it that often here on the pocket and on the shawl you only have to do it I think it's every fourth row as well. So turning your work and let's move on to row number three and you're going to chain two which will not count as a stitch and you are going to have double crochet in the first one. Now the one, the next one here these here are the front post treble, uh, doubles from before. So we wanna keep it so that the other side is the right side. So we're gonna access those and make those a back post double crochet this time to keep the ribbing on the one side of the project. So these two are back post double crochet. The next two stitches are just a half double crochet each. And then we're back to this cabling. So to keep the cabling accurate, the first three Everything is a back post double crochet here. So the first three are back post double crochets. So just peel it so you can see it if you don't. So just kind of using your fingers separate them out and you're making those each a back post double crochet. It's the third one in a row that always gets me. It's right here. So you gotta see how it wants to come in the front. You just wanna push it out to the back. Okay and now the other three are sitting right here. So just kind of peel it and get those three as a back post double crochet. The wonderful thing about this design, the crisscross is always done on the good side so you can always see it happening in real time. Everything else here is a back post um, is nice and easy. So we're now going to start the trinity stitch and now this is when it gets fun. So the first two, uh, we're just gonna go into the first one here and it's gonna be a half double crochet by itself. Now we're gonna do the trinity using this stitch, this stitch and this chain one space. It's gonna get easier now. So you go in there, you go into the stitch, you go into the space. And then pull through all of it and chain one and move on. So everything is now by the space and the stitches from this point. So you're gonna go into the space first cause that's where the last one finished. You're gonna go into the stitch and then you're gonna go into the next space. And then pull through everything and chain one to finish. So you don't chain one on the very last one of this section. So starting in the next space, the stitch and the next space. Chain one, so space, stitch and space. Chain one, so space, stitch and this is the final one. So then the next one is not a space, it's actually a stitch. And then pull through everything. And you're not gonna chain one, but you are going to half double crochet in the same one as the last one. And then that is the trinity finished and now you're back onto these cables. So each one is a back post double crochet like before.
Okay, so these are the next three. So just kind of peel them and put them into your path so you can get them. And then finally you're on the other side. So on the other side here we have two half double crochets in a row. So we have one and two. The next two are these posts. You'll keep those as a back post double crochet. And then so both of them are like that and then the very last stitch is going to be a half double crochet as regular. And this is row number three and when you turn it around you can see how it looks. And let's move on to row number four next. In row number four we're going to maintain exactly what we see. We don't have a crisscross going on at all. That's not until number two when it comes back around again. So four and five we're still just maintaining. So we're going to chain two and then the first one is a half double crochet in the same one. And then the next two you can see that there are ridges. So keep those as a front post double crochet now. And then the next two are half double crochets. Now we're back on these cables. So all six of them will be a front post double crochet. See it gets a lot easier once you get more in your hand and you can start seeing where all the stitches are coming out. Okay. So now we are going to move on to the trinity stitch. So look for the space look for the stitch and then this is a half double crochet right before it. So starting in the first one half double crochet by itself and then using that same one plus then the stitch plus then the next gap and there's your trinity. And now we're gonna move on. So you're gonna chain up one using the space, the stitch and the space and then chain one to move on. So the only time you don't move, the, uh, use that chain one is when you're on the very last one. So this is the very last one so there's no space to go into. So you're gonna go into, you went into the stitch and now you have to go into the half double crochet you do not chain one but you will have double crochet in the same one as the last one. And now you're gonna maintain these cables. So there's six in a row that are each front post double crochet. And once you get those six done there is two half double crochets right after it. Then you have your ribbing. So those will be front post double crochets as well. And then you have a half double crochet left at the end. And that will conclude row number four. So we're on the back side again and we're gonna just maintain what we see. So it's gonna be back post double crocheting for everything that you have that is, needs a ribbing or needs these cables. Starting in the first two, just chain two, half double crochet. Okay, these here, keep them on the front side so you're gonna make those as a back post double crochet this time. And then we know that there's two half double crochets before the cables. So in the cables you're making those as a front, uh, back post double crochet across. So you wanna make sure you get all six of them and then you're ready to move on with the trinity stitch. So starting in the next one so you start and you half double crochet first and then start the trinity in the same one, then stitch and then the gap. Chain one and then move on. So gap, stitch, gap and you'll do that all the way 
with the chain one that will separate them except for the very last one of course. So this is the last one. So I'm going to go into the half double crochet as my third one instead of a space. And then there's no chain one but just half double crochet in the same last one. Now you're in the cables again so each one of the six are back post double crochet. The next two in a row that we know of right there are going to be is a half double crochet and then there's the ribbing so we're gonna make those as a back post double crochet to keep it there and then there's a half double crochet right in the end. Sorry that was a back post double and then a half double crochet right in the end. So this is technically the end of number five and this is where you're going to finish in the future as row number five. So you're going to do the pockets now from rows number two through five over and over and over until you get to nine inches tall. So you want a tape measure to measure that. So right where I'm sitting right now would be the end of the top of the pocket. I am going to take you through row number six on the diagram which is the same as row number two just to make sure that you got it and what we're going to do is do that next and just to make sure. So I am going to show you uh, row number two one more time. So back to row number two after you finish number five you're going to do the cabling but you are going to do the crisscross like you had done it before. So you're going to chain two and half double crochet in the first one and this crossing over happens on the good side so you can at least see it. So the next two are front post double and then we know the next two are a half double. So that's consistent throughout the whole thing. Now we want to cross over so we're going to ignore the first three and go to the fourth and you'll do a front post treble in the fourth one away and you'll do all three like that. Now you're going to want to come back to the ones. It's so much easier to see them now isn't it? Before we were having to really count but now it's clearly obvious where those cables are. So you're gonna come back to the first one and so we're crossing over the front side of the work which is much easier. So then this cable should be over top which it is. Starting in the very next one you're going to have double crochet and you're gonna do your trinity so you're, that's a standalone. So start your trinity now. I was really intimidated with this trinity stitch and once I understood that there's gaps to play with oh my god what a deal oh, what a game changer for me on just being able to follow this much easier because I thought I was gonna have to obsessively count throughout the whole thing and I don't have to and on the shawl that's a great thing <laughs> not to have to do. So I only really have to worry about the cabling if you want to call it a worry. So this is the last one so then I go into last half double crochet I do not chain one and I'm half double crocheting on top. So we're now going to do your uh, cable. So you're gonna skip the first three and do the next. And like before the next set of cables that we're about to do will be accessed from behind. Okay so we're gonna have to get these from behind but it's much easier now that you can see it. So you're just gonna just jump it in behind just shift the, the uh, project and just using your fingers being able to see it. So it's this one right there. I find it's just that first one and then once you get it it kind of pulls backward and then the rest are easier to see. So do the next one. Now whether it's easier to see on camera that's another big question isn't it? I'm gonna get a comment. I never saw where you went. I'm like you gotta trust yourself. Now it'd be better if you could wrap the hook the right number of times before you make all that effort right. So those three 
just got covered. Yep. So those are in the back. So we know that the next two in a row are half double crochets. And then the next two are front post doubles. And then the last one's a half double. And this was actually just finishing up row number two. So you can see that we just did a crossover and so you will continue that. So you'll do three, four and five again and then repeat back from two, three, four, five until this panel is nine inches tall where you will finish off and that will be the end of the story. So I am going to pull this out back to number five just to have uh, clarity and I wanna show you how to fasten the yarn off with the tapestry needle at this next point. When you're ready to fasten everything off you want to just come into the last stitch and just pull through so that it kind of locks it and then you're gonna throw this through a tapestry needle. I want you to favor the back side of the work. You can tell which one the cables are on the back. The other side doesn't look nearly the same. So just dragging the, the stitch, uh, sorry the yarn through the back and when you pull it don't change the shape. Just keep it taut but not reefing down on it and go back and forth a total of three times to make that work. Okay and we're gonna move on to the shawl. So you wanna do all your loose ends like that whenever you change your yarns. It's just much easier and you'll also wanna do the beginning one as well. So here's the shawl area here. This is actually the real size and we're going to start off and we're gonna do some ribbing. It's nice and thick here and then we're going to then progress into doing the cabling on both sides that you see. Let me just fold it up a little bit. So you'll have the cables on both sides here and then the trinity stitch in the middle. So I counted that I had 27 of these trinity stitches in a row and once I had that established the first time it was just made it a lot more easier and then you're just gonna play within the spaces anyway and it becomes really quite easy. So you're just going to repeat it set number of rows. I'm only gonna do a little small swatch with you today just enough to show you the cabling and the trinity in the middle because the, the fact is is that this is all a repeat. So you have to make two of these panels. So the panels are a total of about 32 inches and then right at the top of the panel we're going to do a whip stitch to join them and so this is the back of the person's neck and so this will hang out one side the other will hang out the other and the cabling will look like it's going across the whole thing. So it's got kind of a neat effect. You also have your pockets. So the pockets will be applied when you're ready and uh, this is what it looks like. So the pockets will end on row number five and so you'll sew those down. So you can actually position that uh, like put this around you or whatever and decide where you want your pockets to be and then you can move it up or down the shawl depending on your arm length. So without further ado I am going to do a small swatch with you. Let's take you back to the diagram and then we're gonna move on. Coming back to the diagram what we have here is that we have nine stitches at the beginning are all dedicated to the, the cabling. There is no ribbing that is done between the cabling and the edge and you'll see that on both sides and it's just faded out here because there's a distance in between. So as we start and you're going to crochet the set number of stitches that you would like to do um, that's just something that you can keep in mind. I'm only gonna do a small swatch with you to cover both of these cables and a little bit of the trinity in the middle because the middle is all the same all the way throughout this whole thing. And so you will see here that we're going to start the ribbing on row number two and three and it says repeat for ribbing. So we're gonna repeat two and three one more time and then we're going to jump in and then rows number one through four is the repeat then going all the way to the 32 inches and it's just showing you number five which is the same as number one just to make it clear on where you need to go. So let's begin and let's start the shawl. Okay using the same size hook and the same yarn you're going to start off and you can chain 75 to start and I'm just gonna do a small swatch with you. So just uh, do your 75. So one, two, three, four, five and do 75 for me. Meet me back here in just a moment. So now that you have your 75 on here I just have a small swatch here and I am going to and you need to as well set our third chain from the hook. So just count it back. So one and two turn it over and get the back hump of the chain and I want you to half double crochet across it, this is very much how we started the pocket. So half double crochet across your chain and meet me back here in just a moment. So once you come all the way across your shawl it will obviously be much bigger than this. You're gonna turn your work and let's officially begin row number two. In row number two we're going to start the ribbing. In row number two we're going to chain two which will not count as a stitch and in the same post right below you wanna make that as a front post double crochet. So coming around the outside of it and back through the post just make that as a front post double crochet 
and then the next one is a back post double crochet. So just wrapping, come from the back, stay on the back and make that as a double crochet. Okay, so the next one is a front and then the next one is a back. And if your stitch counts are right, the very last stitch will be a front post double crochet. Please do this all the way across for row number two. When you come all the way across the very last one it appears that there's two stitches. Remember that the first chain two did not count as a stitch. So just make sure you just kinda go around both of those. So just kinda sandwich them together and you're just doing that. Okay and then you are just going to turn and then begin row number three. So in row number three we're going to keep the ribbing the same as what you already see. So it, you're gonna chain two and this time it'll be a back post double crochet in the first one because it's on the back side. So going around the, the back part of that and then this next one's in the front so you're gonna keep that in the front. So what's on the front keep on the front, what's on the back keep on the back and you'll do that all the way across to keep the ribbing in play. So you're going to move on and this is row number three and we have to do rows number two and three one more time after this. So just finished off row number three. I want you to do rows number two and three one more time and then meet me back here. So what you see on the back keep on the back and what's on the front keep on the front. So please do that. So when we go to start off this time we're back on row number two. So this will be on the front side and then the next one's on the back and you can clearly see that as well. So do uh, rows number two and three one more time and meet me back here and we'll start the fun stuff of the interior of the shawl. Okay so let's pretend we've gone through the whole span of the shawl now. We have the ribbing all based in. So now we're going to start with rows number one through four and you're going to finish one through four all the way until 32 inches and 32 inches is right from the base of this all the way to the top. So let's uh, begin row number one. So row number one we're gonna start off with some half double crochets. We're gonna throw in some cabling. We're gonna get your trinity in, cable and then the remaining half double crochets. Let's begin row number one. So let's begin row number one. We're going to chain up one, two. So chain up two and put three half double crochets in a row. There will always be three half double crochets in a row on the beginning and the end of this section for the shawl. So what we need to do now is that we need to skip the next three of those stitches and then go to the three after that and we're going to put in the front post trebles. So now that I've done the pocket first I find myself I can blaze through this pretty quickly because I understand it. So I'm glad I was able to do that. Okay, so you're gonna do that and then you're gonna come back to the ones that you had to skip over and you can go in the front. And again it's like before if you're finding the one on the other side going in the back is harder then you can do this as well. I'm not sure if people really would judge you on that. Uh, if they didn't know they, they wouldn't know right. Okay, so now that we have the crisscross done you're gonna come into the very next stitch that's available to you and you were going to put in your first half double crochet and then start your trinity up. So the goal is is that when you come to the other side the last nine stitches should be the actual cable work itself. So just kinda work that out in your head. So just start your trinity. So starting in the first one of the same last one and then just picking up the next three in a row and then chain one. So then start in the same one as the last one and then the next two in a row and then chain one and you're gonna do this all the way across except for the very final nine. So I'm gonna check it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. There's the ninth. So this is technically the last one. So I'm not gonna chain one and I'm just gonna half double crochet. So that will happen to you as well. So in the last nine you're gonna skip the next three in a row and you're going to front post treble the next three. And like before the next three have to be accessed from behind unless you decide otherwise. Okay so let's get the ones and get in from behind. If you don't wanna do that then just access it from the front and just kinda of manipulate it and get your three that you skipped just by going partially through the project on the back side. This is actually take number two for me. I actually missed one of them. 
and it's uh, the ribbing makes it a little more challenging to get that extra one that you need. So it's this one that right here is what I need. Got it. Okay, so I have my three in a row and then the final last three stitches are half double crochet and that will conclude off row number one. And then turn your work and let's start row number two. So let's begin row number two. So two, three and four are just going to be doing uh, back posts or, or front post double crochets. You don't have to worry about doing that crisscross. So chain up two doesn't count as anything and we know that the first three in a row are half double crochet. Now the cable work that's next which is six stitches because we're looking at the back of the project now the next six in a row will be a back post double crochet. So keep those cables in order. Just use your fingers to ply them apart from each other if you have to very first time you're kind of going through them it's kind of they kind of bunch together until you really get the pattern established. So now that you got the six done you start the trinity. So you start in the next uh, half double crochet, the next stitch and then the space. So it's like it was before on the pocket. So now that the six are done you're gonna half double crochet in the next and then the trinity starts from there and it gets the next stitch and then a gap space. It's like it was in the pocket. And then chain one and move on. So it's gonna be the space, the stitch and the space. And then chain one. So you're doing this all the way until the trinity runs out. The last trinity you do not chain one after the end of it. So just keep an eye on it as you're going. So I'm not counting the number of stitches. So okay so there's no um, trinity after this so the, I just went into the stitch. So I have to finish the third one in the half double crochet and pull it and then double or half double crochet in the same one as the last one. So now continuing on these cables back post double crochet each of those. and then half double crochet the last three in a row. And that was officially row number two. Let's move on to row number three. We're looking at the good side of the work. You can see the cabling is all in front. You're going to chain two and half double crochet the first three as always. Your cabling is next. So just the six, keep them as a front post double crochet. You don't need to cross them over at all. So you see you don't really have to um, worry about those cabling too much. Okay that's in. So the next one is half double crochet by itself and then you start with that same one plus then the stitch plus then the gapping space for the trinity. Chain one to move on. So this is the last one before the edge. So then the third one is actually in the top of the last half double crochet. You do not chain one but you will half double crochet in the same last stitch. And then these cabling are back so you're just gonna keep them as a front post double. So you can see that they get more and more defined as you're blasting your way through. And then finally the last three are half double crochet. Okay so let's move on to number four which is the final of this repeating and then we'll 
talk from that point. So turn your work and go to four. So row four is the same as row number two. So you're just chaining up two. You put in your three half double crochets in the beginning and I'm just gonna just summarize here because you already know what you're doing. These are gonna be back post double crochets the six. You're gonna do your trinities, your back post double crochet in the six and then the last three or half double crochets. This is the same as row number two. So get that done and you are then going to repeat then rows one through four over and over and over until it's approximately 32 inches long. So let's talk assembly. So you will have two panels that are both about 32 inches and they're both finishing on row number four. So when you finish on row number four what's gonna happen is that these here are going to align with each other. So it'll look like it's seamless other than what you see in the color. So what you can do now at this point is you need to put them together. So once you have the lengths done you can put them together with the invisible join. So here's what I'm going to recommend and you're going to need a tapestry needle and then whatever color you're using. Um, in my case because I have two different colors um, if I use the same color it pretty much be invisible. So you wanna cut a, a long enough strand so you can span the whole width and actually get it sewing into position and you wanna create a slip knot on the one side. So you will wanna start on an edge and then work your way all the way but in my case here because it's just a sample I'm just gonna start right here on the top of the screen. So I just wanna grab the one side and match the stitches. So when you're on the edge the stitches should match each other. So you're just gonna come across and that slip knot that I did you just wanna put that through. And you're gonna pull that and that slip knot is gonna help lock it into position. And if you leave the tail long enough then you can use your tapestry needle to hide that in too. So advancing to the next stitch you can go here to the next one and just join it. This is called a whip stitch. So I would not single crochet this thing shut but if you do this you'll have a nice kind of like a seamless join with a whip stitching technique at the end. So you'll go all the way down your panel like that. So I've just come all the way across. So what I wanna do is at the very end here I wanna have it so that it will tie itself into a knot. So it helps it lock. Okay so just pulling it through and then I turn it to the underside and like I showed before we're just weaving in the ends. I would just go back and forth on the seam line area just a total of three times. If you're using the same color you will never see this here but definitely go the th uh, three times. and then they're officially joined and then you're good to go. So there is no border for this whole thing. So the outside edge will just be the same and it will line up and you just gotta stretch it out and then the cabling will go across just like you see. So let's uh, talk pockets next. So let's talk pockets. So you're gonna wanna position it so it's about halfway. If you wanna try it on and move it now is your chance to do it. Make sure that you have it equal on both sides though if that matters to you. So you're going to start off with the strand. You can attach it already if you wish or you can uh, add it to it. Very much like that slip stitching like I just showed you with the slip knot. So when I like to sew things I'm just gonna move it down just for tutorial reasons but when I like to go in I like to go in and I like to just to grab a few of the strands that are on this side. I don't like to go all the way through the project. So just grabbing a few strands and then just flipping the outside chain onto this thing. And so it'll grab on. So you're going to just go back to the project. So if you were using a different color you would never see this color on the other side if you were um, to flip it over. So just going in the few strands and all you're just doing is tracing around your pocket and you may wanna pin it down to your project if it's up to you. You could use stitch markers and you're just going to trace all the way down on three sides of the pocket. Now on the one pocket shot I did I actually went in about an inch on both sides here and therefore if it's flying around it, it gives a bit of a, uh, a blocker. So if you had something in your pocket maybe something like this and it was gonna pop out if you just actually put in a few extra stitches right here it when it's in the inside of the pocket it won't want to pop out because it's going to get caught. So it's up to you on how you would like to do it and it's actually a really neat idea. You're going to follow it around. 
you will just uh, fasten off your yarn very much like I did with the, the seam line here of just going back and forth and it's actually a really neat idea. So it's actually a really beautiful um, particular project and the stitch work is amazing and I think you're gonna have some fun. So this is it today. This is the crochet velvet cable pocket shawl and hopefully you've enjoyed today. Have a good day and we hope to see you again real soon.